and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Taylor and today is going to be a two-week check-in on my attempting to date in real life social experiment. So if you're new here, hi, my name is Taylor and on this corner of the internet we love to crochet, we love to read, and we also, you know, like to talk about real life things, and this is one of those real life things. I also have two markets next weekend, and I'm trying to, you know, prep some balaclava, so I am going to be crocheting during this video. I challenged myself to go six months with no dating apps, and really putting an emphasis on trying to immerse myself into the new community that I'm in. I just moved to Minneapolis, Minnesota, in August and then I was in and out of town for many weeks for my day job and I actually just came home today from my last trade show for the season and I'm very excited to be home and to be staying home. Also don't forget to subscribe to the channel to follow my journey and also you know just talking about other stuff we can be gal pals or they pals or you know, whatever you choose, <laughs> and please like the video and comment down below one good thing that's happened to you within the past two weeks. I would love to know. So let's hop in. So I've been off the dating apps for a little more than two weeks now. Um, when my video went live announcing this sort of like social experiment, uh, at that time I had actually already deleted my dating apps. I was like, you know what, I'm done, let's just get this started. So I think that was more around like September 20th through the 25th maybe, somewhere in that timeline. Uh, also this isn't something that I haven't like done before, I've taken breaks in dating, decided to you know, not do the apps for a little bit. But I never really put an emphasis on trying to meet someone in person. If I was off the apps, I like was not dating. I was like, you know what, I'm taking a break, full stop. I do find, you know, not being on dating apps here kind of difficult. And I think that's because I plan on being in Minnesota for the long term, which is also something I've been not like struggling with, but something... I'm working through on my own. I've never lived in a place that I was like, okay, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna be here for a while. You know, I was in high school and I did not want to stay in my hometown. I was in college and, you know, most people don't stay in their college towns. And like where I went to college, it very much just was a college town. <laughs> and then, you know, I went to Sioux Falls and I was in Rapid and both those places I was like, yeah, the Sioux Falls I really liked. I think like if I had been there like longer, it would have been fine, but also like I didn't really want to be. And I brought that into every relationship that I had. I was like, okay, you know, we're not going to be here forever. We as in like the collective me, you know, we're not going to be here forever. So like, it's fine. You know, everything's fine. You know, we'll leave eventually. And I would always say that without any thought as to where I was going. I just was leaving. Now I'm going to be here, you know, seemingly forever. And that's, like, kind of scary for me. I have never, I guess, like, felt that sort of relaxation in a place of being like, oh, okay, yeah, let's chill here for a bit. I have also found it hard to relax, like, the past two weeks that I've had off from my work travels, knowing that I had to jet off again, even for, you know, this short amount of time. I was only gone Tuesday through Friday. I was just like, oh my gosh, like that's, you know, it's still a whole work week of time. And I feel that I haven't been able to like go to any events that I wanna go to or really put down any roots or make any plans because my job has like been at the forefront of my mind and when I've been home I've just been like okay I need to relax I don't really want to do anything or I've been like seeing friends and family thankfully I just got home from Indy today that was my last work trip for the foreseeable future now I can focus on like my next goals in regards to you know me myself and I and the space around me 
I am going to be bringing my rabbit in hopefully soon and I also really want to get another cat. So like I said, I have been like hanging out with friends and seeing family. So while I tried to stick to my two events per week type of thing, um, some things have popped up and this is honestly nobody's fault. Like it's just a thing of life sometimes and when someone important to me whether it be friend family whatever is like hey i need you like i want to be there for them because you know i would want them to be there for me so i haven't gone to many events but i do plan on going to some this upcoming weekend and week i have the swaco concert on tuesday and i also want to go to commander night on wednesday and there's a like book pop-up shop at a brewery on sunday that i kind of think i'm gonna go to so there's definitely things going on that you know i want to be going to and attending that i will be attending i prioritize i've been prioritizing going on walks and i found that it's been like really great for my mental health and getting me out of the house for about an hour at a time i really want to keep up with this working out in my apartment gym now that the weather there is starting to get a little colder you know going on walks is going to become less and less viable I'm gonna keep trying but especially with the Sun setting earlier and earlier you know I'm just gonna have to be the apartment gym and that's fine my goal is to work out at least three times between when this video goes live I want to work out there in the apartment gym at least three times between now and then when my next update goes live which is going to be October 25th and I can already feel a change in my body and the way that I've been like eating and moving. And what prompted me to realize this was I actually had to move a wooden pallet at my most recent trade show in Indy. And I actually was able to lift the pallet and move it with ease. Whereas in years past when I've had to do those things at shows, I've actually had to do them uh, <laughs> like... And it's been a lot of energy and, you know, not very fun. I've had to have other people move it for me because I couldn't lift the pallet. So, honestly, it feels good to have that little bit of, like, confidence that, like, oh, what I'm doing is working and it feels good. So, that that's really nice. So, I did actually meet one person when I went out for drinks with a friend a couple weeks ago. And while we did plan, make plans to go on a date, it didn't end up happening. And after thinking about it on my own a bit longer, I don't think me and this guy really had anything in common. I think it was just happenstance that we started talking and it was like, oh, you know, we've both had a little bit to drink. We're both, you know, feeling good. Like, let's go on a date sometime. And I'm not upset that the like this date didn't happen and I think it go I don't think this person's like a bad person I don't wish ill upon them you know I think that like ultimately him and I just like weren't compatible uh but I do think that this shows that you can get ghosted even if you meet someone in real life because I what's the word I've had problems with like dating app algorithms and who they're trying to like get me to meet or say that I'm most compatible with and for whatever reason, it ends up being the kind of people that, like, I really don't like in real life. So that's why I want to try and meet people in real life. Not because I think dating apps don't work. It's because I feel like I'm not meeting people that I'm actually, that I actually like. I also feel like I'm not strapped to my phone as often. And with that newfound time that I would have spent swiping, I've been posting a lot more on my Tady Creations Instagram account, which is always linked in the description, so if you want to go follow. And I've seen an uptick in both quality of my reels and the amount of views and engagement on them, which has brought me a lot of joy. And it's been really fun to, you know, come up with more complex thoughts and ideas for my reels. And I, you know, hope to continue to do that. I also feel like I can get myself to do things that I'm not looking forward to, such as editing. I feel like I've been a lot more on top of my game with getting videos out in a timely manner. And I'm not spending a bunch of time scrolling on social media, even though I'm not a perfect being. Sometimes I do end up doom, doom scrolling. But I find myself finding less excuses not to do the like these things, such as like editing or working out or even like doing the dishes or getting my laundry done which has helped a lot with my consistency and I really hope that this is something that I can, you know, keep taking into the following weeks. 
I've also come to a few revelations about some dating advice that I keep getting. So we're just going to like talk about those for a minute. My plan is to hopefully have a more consistent, what's the word, almost like formula in the way I do these because I want them to operate kind of podcast style. Uh, today it's very stream of consciousness because I got a lot of things together but also I, you know, not a perfect being, it's the first one. So let me know in the comments below what you think um, and we'll try something new for next time. But moving on. The concept of loving yourself first is such a farce and it feels like it's a way to get you to stop talking about how you're feeling. I've heard many people in relationships say that they don't love themselves or struggle with loving themselves so like it's not really fair to hold myself or other single people up to a higher standard than these people with partners would. Because like just like you struggle with loving yourself and you have someone. I struggle with loving myself and I don't have someone. And I work very hard. I work endlessly on like loving myself. But being told that I don't have a partner because I don't love myself enough is like not a fair statement. And you know, are people going to say like, oh, well, it's a stretch. And it's like, yeah, but like you didn't find your partner when you were actively loving yourself. It feels like such a shutdown when you're like, gosh, like, I'm just really having a tough time with dating, like, things just really don't feel like they're going my way. And sometimes you just want to, you know, say these things and have someone be like, I'm so sorry that, like, things are going like that. And it's really hard when someone just goes, oh, you'll find someone. You'll find someone. Oh, you just need to love yourself first. And it's like, it, it shuts down the conversation that you're trying to have when you're trying to be like open and vulnerable with the people around you and you know you want to feel that intimate closeness with somebody so bad and you know some people do say these things to complain and all that stuff but like I know for myself I say them as like an olive branch to where we could like maybe talk more intimately about how I've been feeling and if people don't want to do that that's fine but you know it's hard because I'm telling these things to people in my life that I would like to be able to be intimate emotionally intimate within those ways. I've also been having problems with like the self-improvement game, meaning that when you're, you are single, you should be in the pursuit of your highest self at all times. And when you reach self-actualization, the universe will reward you with a partner. <laughs> like this was brought to my attention watching a video on YouTube called Dating Apps Rotted My Brain by Amana Maria Anna. And I haven't been able to stop thinking about it. Single people are expected to push themselves to great lengths to hopefully get rewarded with a partner. Well, partnered people don't have to do with the work anymore, right? Like, that doesn't make any sense. I think that we should all be striving to, like, better ourselves because we want to, because we don't want to hold on to these things that could potentially be harmful to us or the people around us. And that kind of transcends whether or not you are in a relationship. So these past two weeks, as I mentioned, we're not all sunshines and rainbows. I did have a few valleys that were really hard to get myself out of, and I realized that I might be more jaded than I think. I'm trying to strike a balance between a healthy skepticism while staying optimistic. And the way I'm trying to combat negativity in my mind is by doing affirmations and daily gratitudes. I have just been seeing things like I keep clicking on YouTube videos that say like, oh, you should do gratitude and affirmation. I'm trying to be positive and really go into this with an open mind and heart. And, you know, I have some events planned for these next few weeks and then it's my birthday and Halloween and well it's Halloween then my birthday but you know I don't want to have a bad attitude because obviously you get out what you put in. I really want this to work for me in some way and it doesn't mean that like oh you know I get a boyfriend and it all is whatever but you know I want to make new friends. I want to just be comfortable existing in this community and find some new friends. So I have been actively reading All About Love by Bell Hooks. 
as you can see I've been tabbing it and annotating it and it's just been an amazing experience to read. So I am a little under halfway done with it. I think there's 13 chapters. Yeah, so I've been trying to read about a chapter a day. It's so easy to read. And each chapter is like a little bite-sized thing about different facets of love. And I just want to like share with you a few things that have resonated with me in this book. Um, and then, you know, we'll talk about what resonates with me on the last half of the book later in October. Love is a choice, so it's something we do actively. There is no accidentally falling in love. And with that too, it is also a choice when somebody, you know, cheats on you or betrays you or, you know, there is no losing control or, you know, some people think that like, trigger warning for talking lightly of sexual assault but like some people think that that's like a crime of passion or you know domestic violence is a crime of passion and that's just like not true it's not true at all it's a way to try and exert your power over somebody it has nothing to do with love love and abuse cannot coexist if there is abuse there is no love and i know that this is very like hard for people to accept within my own life there are certain things that you know make that statement very hard to accept but it goes back to you know exerting power over somebody if you know that you would never do that to someone that you love how can you look at someone else and like somehow justify that they love you uh, many people have children because they think these small people are endless wells of love to be dipped into and depleted the chapter on children was so good. It was chapter two, Justice, Childhood Love Lessons, and it talked about how a lot of people will neglect or abuse their children and they almost do it gleefully. This book was published in 2001 and, you know, people... She said that she was at a dinner with her colleagues where she talked about ed well-educated people you know, gleefully talking about almost like abusing their children and how they got a real kick out of being able to like exert power over them in one way or another, whether it be like pinching them into coercion or yelling at them and really like tearing them down until they like start to listen to you. Another lesson from that chapter in particular, parents need other adults to help them parent. And just because you have a kid doesn't mean you know everything about parenting that there ever was. And that's why, like, community is really important. I think that there is this trend of, you know, oh, well, like, the parent knows best and you can't challenge their parenting and blah, blah, blah. And I think that that's true when it comes to maybe people being like, yeah, you should, like, slap around your child a little bit or exert power over them. But... The example used in the book was Hooks had a friend who didn't want to give her teenage daughter an allowance because she like didn't trust her daughter. And so Hooks talked with her with her friend's like teenage daughter and then talked with her mom and was able to kind of be a mediator between the two. And in the end the girl ended up getting an allowance and, you know, using that money wisely for things that she actually wanted rather than just, like, splurging on sweet treats and stuff. And it wasn't an attack on this woman's parenting because she had valid concerns over, you know, giving her child money and, you know, Hooks being there to kind of help ground her friend is I, I think really important because you know we all come on come here baby we don't know everything we don't know what we don't know and sometimes you know having other adults in the situation because it can't just be your partner because sometimes both of you are just too close to the situation you know I had that with my own parents sometimes it's you know I thought that that was like really a good sentiment to have and I also think that the child the childhood chapter was just really good in general but it kind of gave me more thoughts to like the gentle parenting movement 
Um, and not to get into like gentle parenting versus permissive parenting and all that sort of stuff. But I think, you know, after, not from my own parents' hands or anything like that, but I think a lot of people in general, after experiencing such kind of like horrific actions from their own parents, are like, okay, well, I don't, I don't want that. And so they have chosen to blaze a new path. And I think that that's really powerful and really cool. We are all liars and it's, it is important that we are truthful without cruelty and that when we receive truth from others, we do not take it too personally. There's a short excerpt about, about how women don't actually want honesty from men, but I think it's that women don't want cruelty from the men in their lives. I've experienced hard truths from men before that were done with kindness and grace, and this is something that men can learn and would be helpful in all of their relationships, not just romantic ones. I'm really sick of the sentiment of, well, you know, men, we're just honest. The thought that someone takes pride in being brutally honest is a way of them taking pride in being cruel to others. And I think that that's like kind of weird. And I think that you should um, maybe take a long look in the mirror and actually ask yourself if you're a nice person or not. Um, but it's not fair that, you know, we want truth from people but then, you know, we're just able to kind of like exempt men from it because men, you know, men, when they're truthful, they're mean. It's like, no, they can learn how to be nice about it. Like I said, I've, I've heard hard truths from men. Some, I've definitely had men come up to me, or not come up to me. I've had men, you know, that I thought, you know, we would pursue something romantic together. And they're like, you know what, this just isn't for me. And, you know, here's why. And, you know, it did hurt in the moment. Don't get me wrong. It does hurt to be rejected. But you know, hindsight, it, it's nice to have somebody care enough about you to let you know and see you as so much of a person that you deserve, like, some form of closure and an answer from them. Self-love does not equal narcissism, and you need to speak to yourself and treat yourself how you would like others to treat you so that you can know when to leave when someone is not treating you right. The basis of all major world religions and new age spirituality is love and we need to learn to love beyond ourselves and our shopping habits. Um, you don't need a new bible or a tarot deck when the ones you have are just fine. Uh, like love does not equal shopping. Shopping does not make you a better believer in whatever spiritual practices you choose to partake in. I thought that that was a really good chapter as well, talking about like spirituality and linking it to love. I'm enjoying reading this text a lot and I think that anyone who is trying to improve any relationships in their lives, like with them, even with themselves, should read this book and I'm super eager to keep on reading. So I do believe that is all I have for this check-in. I think for the next one, as I said, I want to figure out more of a concrete structure. Um, and have them function more as a podcast style format. Time just got away from me last this past time. So let me know if anything in this video resonated with you. If there's if, you, if there's anything more you'd like me to touch on, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more reading and crochet content. And please like this video and again comment down below one good thing that happened to you this week. And I will see you guys later. Bye.